forestall of relating to or living in a large wooded area with a thick growth of trees of or relating to the trees of a forest of or relating to an area planted with exotic pines or similar trees of or relating to something resembling a large wooded area especially in density. My name is Nick Brown, I'm an Adelaide based emerging artist. This year I made a work called Forestall which was a painting based installation presented in Adelaide Botanic Garden during Fringe 2013. I had the idea for this work about 18 months ago and I was looking at a engraving, a black and white engraving by Nicolas Chevalier, who's a Russian born um, artist who was active during the 19th century and he spent some time in Australia um, and produced some Australian colonial um, paintings and watercolours and prints. This particular engraving was called um, Marysville, Victoria and it was made in 1870 and it depicted to the right in the picture was the edge of a forest and um, kind of centred and to the left in the background you could see that there was new development and buildings, small buildings and in the foreground lay these large cut logs of wood and when I saw those cut logs of wood with, with the circular, um, perfectly circular faces I just immediately had this um, this idea to, to paint on the end of cut logs. For this particular work I was drawn to the Mallee section of the Adelaide Botanic Garden and it's because it was another Native Australian section. There are two that I'm aware of, there's the Australian Forest and the Mallee section and because the, the subject of my paintings, the landscapes, um, at the moment are based on my experiences hiking and walking through different parts of bushland in Australia, particularly recently it's been Tasmania and Queensland. So I feel very interested and drawn to the Australian landscape and Australian flora and fauna. A lot of the Mallee, sec the Mallee section is relatively newly planted. It was planted in, 19, in the Botanic Gardens in 1954 as part of an experimental garden to educate the public about native Australian plants. Um, but in the middle of the Mallee section is this ginormous Moreton Bay fig. Its boughs and branches stretch out very wide and they go all the way down to the ground. Um, and the foliage is dense and thick. And because it's so tall, so wide, and goes all the way down to the ground, the branches and foliage creates an, an interior feel. Um, when you're beneath the Moreton Bay fig, you feel like, or I felt like I was inside a room, that I was in, in, inside an interior space and a more intimate space. It made me think of home and a house and that idea of home is important in my work. I was very keen to um, use river red gum as my material to paint on. Um, however, I found that this was, act was actually really hard to source. And um, the few bits and pieces that I did find, it was qu quite red on the inside and that affected my painting a bit too much. Um, so I, I sourced, it was really important as well that I sourced um, salvaged um, salvaged eucalypt logs. So I really got them from people's backyards when they'd had trees either fall down or be cut down because the, um, the roots were going to their house foundation or they were too close to the house, it was dangerous for example. And so they were a couple of different um, species of eucalypt. I don't know exactly what they were, um, but they were eucalypt. So that was kind of important to me that they were native. The table was great um, for a variety of reasons. It added to the work practically, conceptually and aesthetically. Um, practically, it kind of, it held the logs together. So for a safety reason, it kept the logs quite contained. I did have cables attached to the legs 
and the logs were all wedged in and then weighed down with sandbags and gravel from the top. So they were very safe and secure. For aesthetic reasons, um, I think it just really pulled the work together and it looked beautiful, the contrast of different timber colours as well as um, polished, finished, turned timber that had been treated and made and put together com um, compared with raw, untreated, quite roughly cut timber. Also what was quite interesting about the table is that it's, it's named a colonial Australian pine table. The work was made in Australia but it was made with imported timber. It was made with um, American sugar pine. So I found that to be of, of added interest as well because I was particularly working with, with natives and this idea of, um, um, of introduced species I kind of thought was quite interesting in the work. The source imagery for my paintings on the timber, um, they were photographs that I took on a trip to Springbrook National Park in Queensland. And I did a lot of walking through the National Park and took a lot of photographs. So the paintings are based on those photographs. I do um, invent in the paintings where necessary. If the composition isn't working for me, I add heels or I add clouds or mist or rain um, or change the levels of contrast, for example. And I, I reduced my painting palette to greys um, and that again was in response to that initial print by Nicolas Chevalier. And as I continued painting and getting to know the logs that I was working with, um, I saw that <clears throat> The logs themselves were, even though quite neutral in colour, they had these beautiful flecks of pinks and greens and oranges through them. So um, from time to time in my paintings, I would subtly bring some of those colours through in the form of glazes, um, just to increase, just to add a bit of variety to the grey because it was almost a bit too, a bit too grey and a bit too, um, um, a bit too neutral. Making public art for me is a really significant component of my broader artistic practice, um, particularly because I have an op it gives me an opportunity to develop and extend my practice. I also really love the idea that the general public and people who don't tend to go and visit galleries on a regular basis, if at all, can stumble across these things and engage with um, really interesting temporary works of art. I think often we come very familiar with permanent works of art um, dotted around Adelaide and they are of immense historic value and add to the culture of the city but I also think temporary public art is just as important um, and as interesting.